You out there guys, this is Dale and Archie of Lone Wombat Airsoft and today I'm going to be talking about uh, my favourite thing about Airsoft and that's the moments and stories that you build as time goes on. Now what I've found is that uh, looking back on my previous games you tend to forget like how many kills you got on a particular day, which team won which game and if you go to a particular site for lots of times then all the repeat visits tend to blur into one over time but there's some things that stick with you and those are what I like to think are the perfect moments, those stories that you tell your friends about when something amazing happened and that's what I'm going to be discussing today. Uh, if I do have video footage for the things that I'm going to be showing, I will be putting it in the video, uh, but some of these I don't have the footage for, either because it was in the days before I had a video camera or maybe the camera had gone down at that particular time, but if I do have that footage, I'll be trying to include it. And so with that out of the way, on we go. So we'll start with the first thing that really actually kicked off my YouTube channel, the Flying Knife Kill. Now this is going back years and years and years, and it was the, actually the very first day that I was running my brand new at the time, GoPro Hero 3. Uh, up to that point I had actually been recording games but they're in this tiny little micro camera and it wasn't HD so you could barely make out what was in front of me let alone what I was shooting. So running the camera for the first day really upped the game in terms of the footage I was producing. Uh, I hadn't had my setup figured out yet though so uh, I didn't have the headband mount instead I'd like heavily duct taped this camera to a cap and uh, the brim on it wasn't very secure, so whenever I was running along, the brim of this cap would wobble, so the footage was a bit all over the place. But it was a bit janky, but it was better than what was previous, and I'd eventually go on to set it up. But uh, we're at Matlock Combat Games, and I swear to God, I have never seen more snow in an airsoft game before or since. It was so ridiculously deep. Like, it had just come down practically overnight, and so heavily that it was stuck to the sides of the trees. So much so that you couldn't actually make out anything more than 20 metres beyond you, just because of how much snow there was off the side of it, it just completely whited out at a certain distance. Um, and we were attacking the VC bunkers at the time, we were playing a game where there was um, a briefcase that you had to get to there, and our advance had slowed, uh, mainly due to one particular enemy player, who was uh, just kind of sat on the briefcase, and it was very clear to all around that he just wasn't taking his hits at the time. Uh, in the video itself you can actually hear the other people in the background like yelling at this guy to take his hits um, and I was plinking away at him with me king arms dragging off at the time and uh, yeah I was seeing that yeah I was hitting this guy but nothing was happening and uh, it kind of got to the point that we're just so frustrated of it I thought right that's it I've had enough and I just start sprinting at the guy. Uh, so moving through like foot deep snow, I'd actually throw my rifle into a snowbank because I didn't want it damaged what I, with what I was about to do so the snow would catch it and just started sprinting towards this guy. There was like a, a fallen tree in the way and I just leapt straight over the thing and before I actually touched the ground just shoved him on the shoulder for the knife kill and just rolled away into the snow. And yes, you don't need a physical knife at that site. I've had that comment a couple of times from it, but it was just... One of those things that everyone saw that and the game just froze. Like everybody forgot that, that we were supposed to be playing airsoft at that point because from the rest of the team's perspective, I'd just come out of nowhere, took out the guy that was towards the proms and just disappeared into a snowbank. And yeah, we had to think to ourselves like 30 seconds later, oh yeah, there's an airsoft game on, isn't there? Okay, let's carry on. Um, <laughs> I had to go trekking back to find my rifle because yeah, the snowbank saved it from being damaged, but it was buried. Like I had to try and see if I could find a Dragunov shaped impression in the snow to get this thing out but uh, no that was a, that was a cracking thing at the time and that's really what kind of actually started getting my YouTube channel some attention um, because that video itself was actually featured on the Airsoft GI uh, top 5 at the time and so that actually drew a lot of people towards the channel and so some of my really long time viewers will probably remember this but uh, this one I definitely do have footage of so link in the description if you want to see that one out for yourself. The Traitor Game. Now, this one was played at Black Dagger Airsoft years and years and years ago. And I was actually borrowing my friend's Type 7 b the short cut-down CQB version at the time. Let's call him Spud from here on out. And I loved the gun at the time so much, it's what actually made me want to go and buy the long-barreled version for myself, which was actually my first um, Airsoft gun review um, on this channel anyway. Uh, but yeah, so the Traitor Game. So a Black Dagger Airsoft and we're playing in the ravine. So big little riverbed with like uh, slopes up either side and paths on the top for people to play in and we were limited to just the ravine. The flags were obviously at either end of it and um, infinite respawns but your respawns were behind the flags. And the twist about this particular game is that both teams had one player who was a traitor and at any point during the game they could like uh, reveal themselves and just start gunning down their friendly mates 
uh, nip the flag and leg it. And uh, so obviously they had to pick the opportune moment because once they'd blown their cover, that's it. They officially had their armband swapped when they respawned and joined the other team proper. Um, and I was in a particularly sneaky mood for this game uh, because one of the sides of the ravine, uh, the path kind of falls away. Like you can't get the entire way along it because uh, the, the actual side of the ravine is like sloped down. The soil had fallen away, so there's a big old gap and uh, with a load of trees hanging across it. So you can cross there, but you have to be very, very careful. And even then you have to like swing on the trees to get across the, the big gap into the ravine. But uh, I was up on this side anyway. I had the Type 97B in one hand, because bullpup small, you could just one hand the thing, and my right arm hugged around a tree. And as I'm just about to cross this thing, I hear behind me, Traitor coming in! And I look behind me, and there's Spud, like running with our flag, just straight down the riverbed, gunning people down as he goes, it's like, oh, well, I wonder what this could be then. So I just, with one arm hugged around the tree, bring the 97 round and just gun him down with his own rifle. And, <laughs> and he looks up at me and is just like, he, he sees me with obviously the same armbands. And he's like, I'm on your team. And I look at him like, no, you're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're not, are you? Because <laughs> obviously he thought he was still on the same side with the same armbands, but he, he just revealed himself as the traitor. So... Oh, I, I love that moment so much, and I love that gun that I actually went and bought one for myself. So thank you very much, Spud, for the uh, recommendation for the Type 97 back in the day. So there's one thing that you will never, ever see me do in an airsoft game these days, and that's throw a grenade. Like, I learned a many, many, many years ago that after many bounce backs and hitting into trees and just rolling down hills, my grenade throwing arm is garbage. And so I just don't buy them. Like, I think the last airsoft grenade I must have bought was when I was still back in uni, so that's six plus years ago. I just don't touch them these days. I let other people do it, I just focus on the shooting. If they've got smoke grenades in my throne, great. But for me, I'll just stick to the pew pew, thank you very much. But it is quite funny to watch other people who haven't had that epiphany yet. And this was one game at Matlock Combat Games, and um, we were coming from Beach's Corner, attacking the mortar pits for people who know the site, and we're right up against the site boundary, which is a dry stone ward into a big empty field. And the other team is dug in deep. They're just spraying out shots at us. We could barely make any progress with this. And one of our teammates, let's call him Weasley, has a smoke grenade on him and has the bright idea, oh yeah, I can spark this and lob it, give us some cover, great. The problem was, is that uh, whilst he was trying to throw this smoke grenade, he was simultaneously trying to duck down and keep his head out of the line of fire. So when he threw this, he wasn't really looking where he was throwing. So he didn't see the tree just two metres in front of him that he barreled this smoke grenade into. It bounced off it and just dropped to his feet in a big thicket of thorns. So there's no way that's coming out again. It still worked though. So it was just spewing out smoke. And because he was right up against the dry stone wall, and because of the direction the wind was blowing, all this smoke was going right off the site, into the empty field, and was doing nothing. In fact, the only thing it was doing was covering Weasley in his two metre squared little patch of shrubs, and it just halted our entire attack. Not because of the other team, or because we'd lost our smoke grenade, because we were too busy laughing at the sounds of Weasley choking to death on his own smoke grenade. Just absolutely loving that. Now, admittedly, he did redeem himself very later on that exact same day where he managed to clear a building with a good bang grenade, but that doesn't make quite the same story, I don't think. So, the mud bath was a game at Black Dagger Airsoft, and um, there was a camera crew on site that day, and this is a particularly good moment for me personally, just because everything happened to come together. Um, we were playing a Attack the Hill game up on Hamburger Hill, the other team was just on the other side of it, just firing down shots into us, and the camera crew was stationed right at the top of the hill, just trying to get as much footage of people as possible. And so obviously, with the cameras all looking at everything, this kind of gave me the confidence to just spur the moment, like try and take the hill. So I just charged up this hill, and everything just seemed to work out perfectly. Like, I didn't slip on the way up, like nobody gunned me down as I was running across the open. And when I crested the top of the hill, most of the people seemed to be looking the wrong way for one reason or another. So I just managed to get a great kill streak on these guys, just shooting down into it, both sides coming back before eventually getting taken out, but taking a lot of the enemy players with me. And that was just a very good personal moment for me. Like, it's like, oh, everything has just come together perfectly. Admittedly, if someone had looked my way when I crested the hill, it would have been done. But I just, I just love those kinds where everything just happens to work out perfectly. And because of that, like uh, the camera crew actually interviewed us later about the various gun setups I've got. And my dad still actually has that um, thing recorded on his Sky Plus box. So it can, that still exists somewhere, that footage. 
So the Land Rover attack. Now this was just a excellent day of airsoft in general. Like uh, the West Midlands airsoft guys were running a weekend event. I turned up for the first day. Didn't plan on staying over, but just wanted a good day of airsoft and see what it was like. And it was brilliant. Like they had some actual military guys on site who were giving us some practice and shooting drills. They brought two snatch Land Rovers with them that they were using to transport people in the game zone and use them as like a convoy and movable cover. And I managed to get a great number of shots on the day, so I was very, very happy with it. But why this particular one is very memorable for me is because it's when I scored what I think is my personal best ever sniper shot. Um, we're playing in what was essentially a big open field uh, with lots of hard cover strewn about, but it was still a big open field. And this meant there were no trees to catch the wind, so there was a big crosswind for most of the day. And um, at one point, the, a group of enemy had just been dropped off by one of the Land Rovers at the top end of the site. And I was trying to put some shots on them. I was convinced I could get them eventually. So I was just pinging the shots on, trying my luck, basically. Uh, but the crosswind was coming across, so it was blowing my shots way off to the right. So I was trying to compensate for that. Uh, but one of them gets up and starts running to the left, where he'd get a nasty flank on us if he actually reached the cover he was running for. Um, so I start trying to track him and take the shot on him. So now I've got a target running left with a right facing crosswind. And I was having to compensate for the shot so much that I couldn't even see the guy in my scope as I took the shot. I was putting so far in front of him, I was leading the target that much and it still managed to get him. Now I will happily admit that shot was almost pure luck. Like sure, the leading is there, but a lot of things could have gone wrong with that shot, but the fact that it landed anyway just makes me so, so happy when I look that back. Like, it wasn't the longest shot I've ever made, it's not firing through the densest of cover, but just firing and hitting a target that you can't see through your scope I, just brings a smile to my face every time. Alright, the PUBG Night game. Uh, so this was a Battle Royale style game that was run at the jail a few years back, and I am so glad I went. Like, um, there wasn't that much in the way of action to because obviously you one hit kill and um, in the first two rounds I actually got taken out before I could even find a weapon but the third round when I was paired up with uh, one of my friends is where it all came together and um, you're just going through because the jails used to be a prison so you're going through a prison at night with scavenged weaponry so it's not your usual kit you don't know if it's uh, what its performance is like you don't know how much ammo is in the thing all you can see is your torchlight so it's all very tense super atmospheric and yeah i had to swap out guns mid game several times like you'd kill a target you think i can't i can't possibly have that much ammo left in this so I'll ditch that gun pinch theirs and yeah, you didn't get many kills in it, but the atmosphere was palpable. Like, go and watch that video. The entire th It's a slow burn, admittedly. There's not many kills in it, but just the tension of um, just creeping through the darkness and trying to scavenge stuff. Oh, it was great. And it's a crying shame that they'll never do that game type again, uh, just because the, the setup time of the game was so long. Because you had to bring all the guns back, fill them out, hide them again, make sure that oh, some of the guns, because obviously the players would be picking them up and moving them, they had to find them first. Like, in the entire evening, we only got three games in, but I am so glad that we just happened just the once as an experience. But, yeah, definitely have a look at that one if you want to experience a really tense atmosphere in a shootout. The domination game at Stormforce Airsoft. Now, great day in general, but the thing that really sticks out to me was the actual objectives itself and how it played out. Uh, so this was a multi-point domination game. There were like seven or eight flags dotted about the site in red or blue colours. And uh, depending on yours, you wanted your flag raised by the end of the game. Um, so it didn't matter how long they were up for. It was just at the end of the game, whoever has the most flags to their colour wins. And as we were playing this, the other team had a pretty decent idea. They all grouped together in one giant mob and they just circled the entire site, smashing our team out of the way at every point they got to. And whenever they got there, they'd raise their flag and move up onto the next one. Uh, but that got me thinking, like, if they were all literally there in this one giant mob going about the place, then they're not really covering the rest of the site, are they? So it got to the end of the game, and they were reading the scores out, and the other team was so confident in their victory, they didn't even pay attention when, at first when they found out they lost. And uh, the look on their face when they just were, were trying to figure out, hang on, no, we, we, we smashed that, we destroyed them wherever we went, we got all the flags, how did this happen? Well, how it happened is that uh, as their big mob was going around, I was actually stalking their mob. I was about 30, 40 metres back, just hanging around in the bushes. They'd move on to a location, beat our team out, and raise their flag and move on to the next one. And as soon as they'd cleared out, I'd creep in and change the flag back. 
and this must have been going on for a good half hour. They must have made a lap and a half of the entire site doing this. And so by the end, they thought they'd got like all seven or eight flags, when in reality, they only actually had about one or two. And this was a good memory for me because, yeah, sure, it was great fun, but it was just the look on their faces when they kind of puzzled out why they lost. Oh, that, that look has stuck with me for a long time. So the Northern Airsoft Show. Now, this one had another really, really tense and serious game for me and that's why I've really remembered it. Um, the Northern Airsoft Show in general was a great day out, like plenty of stuff going on and frankly it's a crying shame that they've not had another one since but this game stood out in particularly for me because there were some really high stakes. Uh, it was in the uh, buildings at uh, Camp Sparta I think it is and um, there were about maybe 12 players and the it was just a piston shotgun game but the real good thing was whoever won it won themselves a brand new gas blowback pistol so everybody was super serious for this one you had one life if you lost it you were done that's it but because it was all based on your own personal skill like everybody had a good chance of winning this they just had to play it right and so everyone was very cautious as you move through the buildings you're like very wary about taking risks and it just had a very thick atmosphere in the day like you were listening out for any little sound to indicate that maybe there's a, an enemy over there that needs taking out and oh just having some actual stakes to a real game it just added so much to it so again please check out that video it, it's just got such a good tension and atmosphere to it I love that day so the van game at YTA's The Pit. Now this is one that has really stuck with me uh, just because it was a clutch victory, like literally just snatching a win right at the last second from the enemy team. Um, the way this game works is there was a van that was just driving around the site and wherever it stopped, it opened up a capture point. The players would have to rush in, hold it for X amount of time and if they did hold it at the end of it, great, they've scored themselves a point. You couldn't follow the van when it was changing position, like it would just drive somewhere else and the instant it stopped, that's when the capture point was open. Basically, headquarters, if you've ever played that game type. And this was a very, very close one the entire time. Like, neither of the teams had any sort of lead. Whoever was winning swapped all the time. And when it came down to the last capture point, both teams were tied. And... I was, me at the time, I was walking back from our respawn point into the game zone. I was going at a slow pace because I was knackered. I'd been running up and down the site all day chasing after this van. And uh, I was pretty confident that we'd win it because we had four of our guys right next to the van, like uh, very solid on the capture points. So thinking, great, it's in the bag. There's only like, what, 30 seconds left in the game? Okay, I'll just walk it. And then one of the enemy manages to land a grenade right in the group of our guys, takes them all out. And then I'm thinking, well, bugger. So I had to just sprint back towards this van. I'm absolutely pegging it because there's only 10 seconds on the clock and I spot one of the enemy players running in from the other side doing the same. And we're both firing shots at each other, just going to a slide into cover in front of the van, just get up, come around the side and just managed to take him out and just secured it with literally maybe one or two seconds to spare. And just that adrenaline rush of, yes, you just got it right at the very last second. Oh. I loved that game so much. Like, even if it was someone else that had secured it at the end, the, that was just such a good win. Like, absolutely adored that. So, that's a quick rundown of my favourite airsoft moments and stories that have happened over the years. The ones that have really stuck with me. Because, as I said at the top of the video, um, particular game days, the amount of kills you get, which team won which game, it all just gets lost to time. The things that stick with you are these moments, these unique things where things go right or it's really funny and they're the important thing. Like sure, I play airsoft to win, I play airsoft to help the team, I do take the game seriously, I'm not like an uber hardcore military CQB mill sim person, no. But I still want to do good. But how I measure whether I've had a really fun day or not is how many of these little moments happened and they can turn what is an average or a good or an acceptable game day into something really, really great and memorable. And I know that plenty of you guys will have plenty of these stories yourselves. So if you want to share any particular moments that happened with you or the things that you always like to tell your friends, put them in the comment section down below. Let's have a good share and read of these. And then until next time then, this has been Dale and Archie of Lone Wombat Airsoft.